chart. It's very similar to um, when you all came here before with Gunavera. And sort of talk about the similar similarities and maybe the differences between simplification and Gunavera. Perfect. Uh, Jenny, thank you very much for doing this interview. It's a pleasure being in Church of Dan again and with the whole media team and the barn stop, everything's been awesome. And getting back to the point, with going around simplifications, all the similarities that they have, they're, they're uncanny, you know? And uh, they had the same birthday to start off, February 28. Then obviously once he broke his maiden by 16 lengths, the Kentucky Derby signal started coming to the barn, you know, and say, well, Let's come up with a good derby prep, a good route that might get us there and might still give us a full horse for the actual race. And we decided that Florida was going to be the best option. Him and Gonabera, they ran all three Florida derby preps that give points to the Kentucky Derby. And simplification went one more than Gonabera, which is a Mucho Macho Men's Stakes, which is a stake, uh, listed stake the same day that there's a, a stake in Oakland Park and the stake in Oakland Park gives points. The Mucho Macho Men doesn't give points. Yet, we decided that it was going to be his background and uh, he had tested the track multiple times, he breezes on it. So we didn't want to change too much from him. And luckily, the Mucho Macho Man was a very big uh, race for us. It was a stepping stone for us, as a matter of fact, it tells us from six furlongs to a mile, and then from a mile to mile 16. And then that's where it keeps going. And, uh, you know, they both ran second in Hollywood. They both won the Fountain of Youth. And they won the Fountain of Youth on similar running style, which was surprising, you know, they were both really wide open, back in Gunnabera. There was Practical Joe who was going to be the big favorite to win the race. And all of a sudden, uh, we gave Chad a big surprise coming with the back from Gunnabera. And uh, right now, it was uh, Todd who got Emmanuel, the big favorite to win the Fountain of Youth. Todd was making the move, and then Simplification came all the way outside and then got him out there at the last turn. So it's very fun when you see horses to win that kind of style. And lastly, Florida Derby, uh, both horses. Uh, it was more than a uh, maintenance race for them. We wanted to keep them in a fit form. Uh, always dreaming won that race and he ended up winning the Kentucky Derby and gonna be our place third and this year Water Barrio, a very good Florida horse, uh, won the Florida Derby and we've placed third and uh, lastly we're here you know with simplification he's full he's full of himself something they do don't sh that something they don't share in common is the fact that gonna be had to be a horse that will always come from behind you couldn't really rush him to be mid-pack because he would take him out of his running style simplification has what many people call this day tactical speed you have a speed you can take advantage of you can place mid-pack early near the lead a little bit behind the lead and that's when we're gonna get Jose Ortiz a big opportunity to make a decision on race day yeah that's when a parallel you hope doesn't continue the outcome of the Kentucky Derby you know uh, talk about what simplification has going for him going into this race I mean you you mentioned you know maybe more versatility but um, what else I mean Okay, that's that's correct, Jenny. Obviously, it's uh, too soon to make calls, but even though Gunnar Bear plays seventh on the Kentucky Derby, he's a horse that made five and a half million dollars. You know, and that's not easy. You know, every horse can go to Dubai twice, can run the Pegasus World Cup twice, and the Classic twice, and uh, yet he wasn't able to get that Grade One win. But he banked a lot of money, and he made a lot of people happy. And he's a very good style in Florida. Simplification has made five hundred, around five hundred thousand uh, dollars. He has uh, big shoes to fill up. But so far, he has checked every single one of those boxes. And that's what gives us a smile to be here in Churchill Downs and knowing that we have a live horse in the race, you know. Obviously, this is the first time he's running outside of his home track. But if you remember back in 2016, when Gonabera ran outside of his home track, he was in Saratoga, a grade two, and he beat the favorites there and won by a length and a half. So we're excited with our sheepers. Yeah, Gonabera is unbelievable. I was looking up his record uh, before I came over here. and. The, the seconds he had in the Breeders' Cup and, and uh, you know, I think Pegasus, he was, and just, uh, yeah, so, yeah, he said he bankrolled five million. This is a really loaded turf rider type question that mm -hmm. trainers don't have to, like, really deal with, but it, he could follow Guinevere and earn five million, or he could not follow Guinevere and win the Kentucky Derby. Would you make the trade-off for one or the other? It's very tough, Vienna, you know? Like that loaded question. They both gave us a uh, huge satisfaction Gonna be out for us, it was the horse of a lifetime. He opened us too many doors. It's like when a person gets their first dog ever in their life, you know, all that excitement that it brings to them. I recently got my dog, my first dog in September and uh, in veterinary school that gave me a huge aid. But Gonna be out, he will always be dream as the horse of the barn Sano, you know, that's the guy who put the Sano name out there, not just in the US, but in America and Dubai and Venezuela. 
a simplification. We're expecting that he's gonna put our name again out there, and uh, we're really hoping big things from him. You know, he has an incredible style in pedigree. Not this time was really hot. Down in the mother side, he has uh, a shadow way down there related to him. So, classic distance all over. Yeah, he's the other, sort of the other, not this time. Epicenter being by not this time. Um, and but, uh, it doesn't seem like the Florida Derby horses are getting as much respect as maybe in some years because they did kind of come home a little slow. Was that track just kind of funny that day or? You know, Jenny, uh, in Derby days, perhaps uh, all over the US, obviously weather changes, track maintenance changes. Uh, a lot of people like to compare what's called the last furlong or the last couple furlongs of the race. And it's really hard to compare when you have a horse that is about 700 to 800 miles away from another track, you know, because there's a different wind factor, there's a different soil factor. And uh, it will be more a more realistic comparison, in my opinion, if you compare the horses based on horses that ran on the same day, on the same track, you know, and against the handicap division, against the sprinter divisions, against the distance divisions. And uh, sometimes numbers are just numbers. Stat statistics are obviously always important. But when you're here on the first Saturday of May, just a couple hours before the race, what you want to have is a sound horse, a happy horse, and I think he's checked all the boxes. And a simplification, again, you said the last race was kind of maintenance. You were wanting to win that race, get the grade one, but you weren't wanting to uh, gut him before the Kentucky Derby, it sounds like. But... Correct, Jenny. Obviously, every trainer wants to win as many races as they can. And if it's a grade one race, it will be, like many people say, a cherry on top. And... Uh, our goal was to keep him sound, keep him fit. Jose saw an opportunity to try to change tactics for the race. And obviously we're gonna be uh, performing other tactics for the Kentucky Derby to, to come. But the horses who won the race, Wada Barrio and uh, Charger are very good horses, you know? Wada Barrio, we finished four and a half lengths in the Hollywood and this time we only finished a length and a half. So cutting it short and improving in that sense. And Charger is a royally bred horse. You couldn't be having a more happy pedigree than Charger. And to cut it short, I think he's gonna be enjoying the mile and a quarter. He's gonna enjoy post position 13. And Jose has been riding like crazy. He won yesterday, he won the day before. So we're checking all the boxes again. Any predictions? Any predictions for the race? I think uh, Simplification is gonna win the race and then win the Prignis and then win the Bowman.